Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast, made for women who want their healthiest years to be ahead of them, not behind them. Join your host, Courtney Townley, right now as she breaks down the fairy tale health story you have been chasing all of your life into sensible action steps and lasting change. Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast. This is your host, Courtney Townley. Thank you so much for taking time to be here with me today. I hope you're having an awesome summer. And if you're not, I hope this episode will help you tremendously to turn that around. I hope all the episodes in this month's content will help you to create an awesome summer. In case you missed last week's episode, I introduced July's theme, which is Best Summer Ever. And I talked in that episode about why I chose this theme, which in a nutshell is because year after year, I myself personally kind of go in through the summer without really being intentional about how I want to live it. And the summer passes me by, I get thrown back into winter, and I often look back with regret that I didn't take advantage of the awesome weather and the beautiful place that I live. And I really want to turn that around for myself this year. And I also see this as a massive struggle for many, many of my clients. Because again, as we age, we tend to take on a lot more responsibility. And we start making summer really spectacular for our children. And, you know, we throw ourselves into work and we still have our laundry list of to-dos. And it's really easy to completely let the magic of summer slip right past you. And that's just a damn shame because summer is so magical. It's so healing. It can be such a time of renewal. And so I really want you and me to go into the summer this year with so much more intention around how we live it. So In last week's episode, which was the first episode of this theme, not only did I introduce the topic, but I also gave listeners a little bit of direction around how they could start to become more intentional about how they live their summer this year. So if you missed that episode, I highly recommend you go back and listen to it. It's short and sweet, as all the episodes this month will be. Now, before I go on, I want to let you know that our roadmap for the month's theme is available. Now, the Grace and Grit Roadmap is basically a document that my team and I put together. It's really awesome, and it's totally free. What is it? It basically gives you some personal notes from me about the theme on the podcast this month. It gives you the key takeaways of each episode in case you can't listen to them all. And it gives you a lot of additional resources for the topics that we're discussing. It's incredibly value-packed. Of course, I think it's really great because I didn't just design this based on my idea of what might be helpful to you, I actually surveyed my audience, and these are the types of things that you asked for. So I hope you find it valuable. If you've never received a copy of the roadmap, all you have to do to receive this month's is go to graceandgrit.com forward slash best summer ever, enter your name and email address, and not only will you get this month's free roadmap, but you will get every month's free roadmap delivered to your inbox. So if you're someone who's listening who's already registered for one of the roadmaps, first of all, I hope you're enjoying it. But second of all, you don't need to do it again. You don't need to register your email again. We will send you this month's roadmap for free. So take advantage of this. It's great. Um, I think it will help you to kind of solidify some of the ideas and remember some of the ideas as you move forward so you can put them into practice. Because let's face it, Listening to this podcast in and of itself is not going to change your life, but applying what you learn is definitely going to create magic in your life. Now, today on the podcast, in terms of our theme, Best Summer Ever, I want to tackle the topic of body image. And I titled this episode, The Real Secret to Rocking Your Swimwear This Summer. And it's not what you think. Now, I don't care if it's swimwear or shorts or a tank top. All I know is that as the weather heats up, we wear less clothes, 
And there is a lot of opportunity for women to body shame themselves, to beat themselves up, to have a lot of, you know, not so healthy thoughts about their body. And that creates a lot of behavior that doesn't serve the goals that we're trying to achieve or the lifestyle that we really want to live. In no way is body shaming going to help you live your best summer ever. Now, popular culture would tell us that in order to rock your swimwear this summer or you look great in your shorts or feel great in your body, that you need a detox or you need a specialized exercise program or some kind of, you know, highly specialized diet in order to feel better in your skin. I call BS on that. That is not, I'm not saying that there isn't a time and place for some of those elements in some people's process. But what's really going to change your relationship with how you feel in your body this summer is how you think about your body. And that is accessible to you right now without signing up for anything, without going out to buy anything, without radically overhauling your life overnight. You can simply start working on the way you think in order to feel amazing and get the most out of your summer. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Beauty Redefined, but Beauty Redefined is a nonprofit that was started up by twin sisters, Lexi and Lindsay Kite. And this nonprofit helps girls and women to improve their body image and self-worth as they wade through harmful cultural ideals. And let's face it, there's a lot of those. If you're not familiar with their work, you can always head on over to beautyredefined.org, or you can certainly visit their Facebook page at Beauty Redefined. But the reason I'm mentioning them is, first of all, I think their work is incredible. I think their mission is so important, and they have such an elegant and powerful way of really normalizing the conversation of healthy self-image. And I pulled out this quote that I saw recently on one of their social media pages that I absolutely adored, and I wanted to kind of read it from the outset of this podcast today. It says this, loving your body isn't believing your body looks good. It is knowing that your body is good, regardless of how it looks. Loving your body isn't thinking that you are beautiful. It is knowing that you are more than beautiful. Loving your body is understanding that your body is an instrument for your use, not an ornament to be admired. Wow, right? Like, that's powerful. How would your summer change if you lived by that belief system? Let's start with that first piece, right? Loving your body isn't believing that your body looks good. It is knowing that your body is good regardless of how it looks. I would ask you to consider what are all the things that your body is doing awesomely well for you every single day. I've talked about this in previous podcasts, but really I cannot remind myself or listeners of this enough. The fact that you woke up today, pretty damn awesome. The fact that you were able to get dressed and maybe prepare breakfast for yourself and your family, that you were able to go to your job and use your brain in order to create something that's useful to the world, The fact that you're able to hug people, you're able to, you know, do activities, you're able to laugh and chew food. Holy cow, do we spend a lot of time looking for all the things that our body is not doing well? And guess what? When you look, you're going to find that evidence. So look for things that serve you, not for things that make you feel like hell. When I sit down and really consider everything that my body is doing right, you know what it makes me want to do? It makes me want to go eat great food. 
It makes me want to go move my body because that's a way of respecting my physiology. It makes me want to get enough sleep at night because that's what my body deserves for working so hard for me every day. When I look for all the things that my body is doing well, and I really start to believe that my body is good, I treat it with more respect. So really consider today all the things that your body allows you to do in a day so you can reinforce the belief and the truth that loving your body isn't believing that your body looks good. It is knowing that your body is good. Let's dissect that second piece. Loving your body isn't thinking that you are beautiful. It is knowing that you are more than beautiful. I know many of you probably won't do this, but it's a really interesting exercise to ask the people in your life, your trusted friends and family, what they love about you. Because here's what I know for sure. They're probably not going to say anything about your body. What they love about you is your personality and how they feel in your presence and what you bring into the world with your being and how much time we waste focusing on the exterior that isn't really what people love about us anyway, and nor should it be. So again, I think it is useful to you to change the way you think by considering all the things you offer the world that have nothing to do with your body. How do you serve people? How do you create? How do you love people? How do you support them? How do you leave the world a better place? Focusing on those things, again, helps move you into a space of gratitude for the things that your body allows you to do and get the focus off how your body looks. Loving your body is understanding, this is the third part of that quote, that your body is an instrument for your use and not an ornament to be admired. What do you love about summer? What are the things you love doing? And how does your body support you in doing those things? You love hiking? How amazing that you have powerful legs that allow you to go hiking with your friends and family and explore new places. You like cycling or swimming? Great, same thing. Your physiology is allowing you to do those things. You like spending time with your family? Watching your kids grow up and be kids? How incredible that your eyes and your senses allow you to fully experience that. How many things are you missing in summer because you are so focused on the way you look? I would argue we're missing a lot. I've spent my fair share of time there. Something I often consider, and I would encourage you to consider the same thing, is when have you felt your best in your body? You know, a lot of women will say to me, you know, I felt my best when I was my lowest weight. And I often ask them, is that really true? And here's why I ask that. I'm not arguing that some people definitely feel their best at the lowest weight that they've ever been in their life. But for some women, what it took to get to their lowest weight robbed them of so many other enjoyable things in their life that it didn't really make them feel their best. And I speak to this from personal experience. I know for me, at my lowest weight, my lowest weight came at a very steep price. It, it, it basically took so much time and attention away from my family and friends. I had to be so calculated in everything that I put in my mouth that I was literally kind of obsessed about food because I had to be in order to main, like get to that weight and maintain it. 
And to be totally honest, as an athlete and as a mover, when I was at my lowest weight, I did not feel my strongest. I did not feel my most energized. I did not feel powerful in my body. I felt like I had a very limited amount of energy and that I had to be incredibly cautious about how I spent that energy because I wasn't taking in a ton of fuel. And so I think sometimes we tell ourselves stories that just because we looked a certain way in our past, that we felt our best there. Maybe that is true for you, but maybe it's not. What were you doing at that time in order to be at that weight? I know a lot of women at their lowest weight, they were doing nothing to take care of themselves, right? And this tends to be like, sort of high school, college, before you got married, before you had babies. We didn't have a great diet, necessarily. We weren't moving our bodies all that much, necessarily. But we could fit into, you know, a clothing size that we deemed was appropriate. You know, we looked thin. But again, thinness is not the equivalent of healthy. And I know a lot of thin women who feel like hell. So I know for me personally... It is more important these days to be hormonally balanced, to not be reactive, to be sleeping well at night, to feel like I am spending time in all the areas that matter to me, not just hyper-focusing on one area. That's what makes me feel healthy. That's what makes me feel energized. It, what's me, it's, it is what allows me to put my head on the pillow at night and sleep well. But unfortunately, the diet culture teaches us that to have a better body image, we have to, right, we have to have a weight loss goal. We have to subscribe to a certain diet protocol. I absolutely believe that it is possible to be in a space of self-love and want to lose weight. I'm not saying that losing weight is not a worthy goal. It's just that I feel sometimes we hyper-focus on it to the extent that we do some very silly things, and it robs us of our mental health, which is just as precious, if not more so, than our physical health. And we talked a lot about that last month. So here are a few other things that I think you really need to work on in order to improve your body image this summer. And I say you need to work on, every woman could benefit from working on these things, including myself. This is an ongoing practice for me. I said this early on in the podcast, but changing the way you think about your body. Identify how you want to feel in your body, about your body, and choose a way of thinking that creates those feelings right now. Now, this is really hard for people to wrap their heads around. When I work with weight loss clients, I will often, they'll come in and say, oh, I want to lose 50 pounds. And one of my first questions to them is, what is really behind that goal? Why do you want to lose 50 pounds? What do you think you are going to feel that you don't feel now once you lose 50 pounds? And they'll say things like, oh, I want to feel more confident. I want to feel more outgoing. I want to feel happier. I want to feel more capable. I want to live my life more fully. To which I tell them, that's awesome. What if I told you that all of that is accessible to you right now? Because it is. Because all of that is dependent on how you think about your body, not about the weight. And when we withhold those things from ourselves. So we don't allow confidence. We don't allow happiness. We don't allow ourselves to live our life full out until we lose the weight. We kid ourselves that all of a sudden we reach that weight loss goal and everything's going to magically change for us. There's going to be butterflies and unicorns and all our problems are going to be gone. That is never how it plays out. (laughs) I see women doing this backwards. They are pursuing a weight loss goal to feel a certain way, when in reality, we need to think a certain way to create those emotions now, which will allow us to 
treat ourselves with more respect more consistently. And weight loss will very likely be a byproduct of that if we have excess weight to lose. Here's another thing I know that when you think crappy thoughts, you create evidence for those thoughts. So when you think things like, I hate my body, right? You will feel really crappy about yourself, which means you likely won't show up for the things that you want to be doing to take care of yourself, which ultimately creates the result that, you know, you hate your body even more. So how you think, and you hear me say this all the time, directly influences the actions you are taking around self-care or the actions you are not taking And if you don't feel great about the actions you're taking, you need to readdress your thoughts. And if you don't like how you feel about your body, you need to address your thoughts because your thoughts are driving your emotions. So again, focus on what your body is doing right in this moment and why it's amazing right now. Because when you focus on those things, you will find evidence for those things. When I think, wow, my body is amazing. All the things it's doing for me, all the things it allows me to create and produce and the people it allows me to serve. The fact that if I want to learn a new skill, my body will help me do that. The human body is really incredible. And when we allow ourselves to shift our thinking to all the ways in which our body is incredible, we feel better. We feel excited. We feel motivated. We feel kind of like we're in a space of awe. And those feelings drive action, right? We show up for ourselves more consistently and we produce different results because of it. But if you want to feel better this summer, you must take responsibility for how you're thinking about your body. The other thing I want to strongly emphasize is you must stop the comparison game. In the Women of Grace and Grit Facebook community, I recently posted an article about Amelia Bonner, I believe is how you say her last name. She's a well-known endurance athlete. She does a lot of obstacle course races, things of that nature. And the article was really powerful because here is a woman who is incredibly thin, from the outside looks like the ultimate athlete. And in the article, she talks about her 20-year struggle with an eating disorder that was basically kind of ignored by her community because she was being praised for winning races and looking so fantastic. And internally, she was struggling on every level possible. And she finally admitted herself into a rehab program because she was experiencing so much physiological breakdown that she could no longer race. I'm telling you this because we make a lot of assumptions about somebody's health based on how they look. And not only does that create a lot of insecurity for us because we're comparing ourselves to that person, but assumptions are rarely correct. You cannot assume the depth of someone's health based on how they look. Health comes in all shapes and sizes, as does illness. I just want to read you a short quote from that article. Amelia says that it was okay to have a different diet or eating patterns because I was an athlete. It was okay to compare my body to other female athletes on the starting line and to covet their abs because that's just what women do. It was acceptable to dehydrate myself and starve myself before cover shoots because that was just a part of the gig. As long as I was competing and winning, just managing with food, didn't seem like that big of a deal. I was getting away with it. So clearly there was no problem until there was. And I tell you this specifically in the conversation of stop the comparison game, because so often I hear women, especially women who carry maybe a a larger size woman, goes to a party and compares herself to a thinner woman 
saying to herself, well, how come she gets to eat that thing and it doesn't affect her? How come she can drink alcohol and it doesn't affect her? You have no idea how those choices are affecting her. You have no idea what her true health story is. And beside all that, comparison is a piss-poor motivator for the reason I talked about before, which is it makes you think crappy thoughts. It makes you feel crappy about yourself. And when you feel like crap, you make crappy decisions. You are literally looking for evidence for why you are less than a certain person. And that is not going to help you live your best summer ever, not by a long shot. The other thing I want to say on this note is just consume media cautiously, right? Pad your environment. Don't expose yourself to things that make you feel less than. So this goes for social media, magazines, people you spend time with, right? Television shows you watch. Notice how you feel when you're in the presence of certain people and content. And if it makes you feel lousy, stop consuming it. Focus on what is in front of you. This is kind of my final thought for you. When you are fully present with what is in front of you, you don't have time for self-loathing. When you're at the pool with your kids this summer, in your swimsuit, and you're really focusing on your kids and having fun and the sun on your body and the laughter of those children, whatever that environment might be for you, if you are fully present with what is happening in front of you, you will not have time for self-loathing. I want to leave you with this. This is an essay by Glennon Doyle who is the creator, many of you know her, Love Warrior is her book. It's a fabulous book. But she also has a blog called Momastery that she's contributed to for years. And in one of her blogs is titled, Your Body is Not Your Masterpiece. And you can always find it on momastery.com. But I've read this essay so many times over the years, and it never gets old. It is such a powerful message, so I'm going to finish the podcast today by reading it to you. Your body is not your masterpiece. Your body is not your masterpiece. Your life is. It is suggested to us a million times a day that our bodies are projects. They aren't. Our lives are. Our spirituality is. Our relationships are. Our work is. Stop spending all day obsessing and cursing, perfecting your body like it's all you've got to offer the world. Your body is not your art. It's your paintbrush. Whether your paintbrush is a tall paintbrush or a thin paintbrush or a stocky paintbrush or a scratched up paintbrush is completely irrelevant. What is relevant is that you have a paintbrush, which can be used to transfer your insides onto a canvas of your life, where others can see it and be inspired and comforted by it. Your body is not your offering. It's just a really amazing instrument, which you can use to create your offering each day. Don't curse your paintbrush. Don't sit in a corner wishing you had a different paintbrush. You're wasting time. You've got the one you've got. Be grateful because without it, you've got nothing with which to paint your life's work. Your life's work is the love you give and receive, and your body is the instrument you use to accept and offer love on your soul's behalf. It's a system. We're encouraged to obsess over our instrument's shape, but our body's shape has no effect on its ability to accept and offer love for us. Just none. Maybe we continue to obsess because as long as we keep wringing our hands about our paintbrush shape, we don't have to get to work painting our lives. Stop fretting. The truth is that all Paintbrush shapes work just fine, 
And anybody who tells you differently is trying to sell you something. Don't buy. Just paint. No, wait. First, stop what you're doing and say thank you to your body right now. Say thank you to your eyes for taking in beauty of sunsets and storms and children blowing out birthday candles. And say thank you to your hands for writing love letters and opening doors and stirring soup and waving to strangers. And say thank you to your legs for walking you from danger to safety and climbing so many mountains for you. And then pick up your instrument and start painting this day beautiful and bold and wild and free and you. That's the end of the essay. So powerful. Listen to it 20 times. Go over to momastery.com and print it out. Leave it somewhere where you can read it. When we love and appreciate our bodies right now, when we look for evidence for how awesome it is right now, we elevate the level of respect we want to treat it with. I hope that helps you move through the summer with a little more freedom and being a little bit more awake to how you are talking about your body and your head. Think thoughts that are useful to you, not ones that aren't. That's all I have for you today, my friends. I hope it was helpful. If you would like more support, you can always head on over to the Women of Grace and Grit Facebook community. Do not forget, we created that awesome free resource for you, the roadmap for best summer ever, which gives you all the highlights of the episodes this month and additional resources. You can grab your free copy at graceandgrit.com forward slash best summer ever. Have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Grit podcast. It is time to mend the fabric of the female health story. And it starts with you taking radical responsibility for your own self-care. You are worth the effort. And with a little grace and grit, anything is possible.